So now that you've kind of got a basis of what metabolic bone disease is, as well as my story with it, I'm going to give you my eight musts for beating metabolic bone disease. So I can't tell you which of these worked, which of these didn't. All I can tell you is these are eight things that I did, and now he's how he is. He's not paralyzed, he's not constipated, and he survived severe metabolic bone disease. So I'm going to give you my list of eight things. And you might see me looking at my phone, so I've got it right here. Actually, it's on my blog that I haven't touched in like months. So I'll put the blog link in the description below, and it has a description of what metabolic bone disease is, as well as the list of eight things. So if you want to see it typed out, written, printed out, whatever you want to do, I'll put the link for that blog post in the description below. Number one is keep it positive, but keep it realistic. So. Obviously, that bet wasn't positive. We were positive. We wanted to see him get better. We were going to do whatever it took. But we also knew that iguanas don't survive severe metabolic bone disease that often. So we had to talk about when we would call it quits. When would we euthanize? Because I was going back to school. I wouldn't have anyone here to help me poop him. How long did we want to keep it going for before we decided he wasn't going to make a comeback? Number two is soak and don't get discouraged. So we gave our kitties a bath twice a day, every single day, until he pooped on his own again. Because iguanas like to poop in water, it's just natural for them, that's what they want to do. So we did that every single day, twice a day. Each bath was about 20 minutes long. So number three is calcium and the proper diet. Like I said, the two to one ratio in calcium is a big part of what causes metabolic bone disease making sure you are giving the proper foods to your iguana. So my top recommendations for greens are collard greens, mustard green, turnip green, watercress, dandelion greens. These are all really good greens, especially collard greens. So for veggies, butternut squash, acorn squash, or green beans are really, really good staple veggies for them. And then finally, papaya and mango for their fruits are the best fruits that you can give them. Fruits are really like a treat, but papaya and mango have the most nutritional benefits for them. I also recommend staying away from treats and occasional foods during this time. You only want to be giving them foods that are going to benefit them and better their health. Once they're healthy again, sure, give them treats. Like I give our kids treats all the time. I give them yellow squash, peas, once in a while, like a carrot or two, and blueberries, he loves blueberries, strawberries. But I wasn't really doing that while he was recovering. Maybe a little bite of strawberry, a little bite of blueberry, because I really decreased the amount of fruit that he was getting. That's another thing. You can decrease the fruit. Still give them fruit, but just not that much, because like I said, it is not that nutritional, it's not that full of calcium. What you really want to focus on are the greens, and the veggies. All right, number four is UVB. One of the most important things for an iguana is by having that UVB. So making sure you're getting a good UVB, which might mean spending some money. You guys have heard me say it a thousand times. I love the mega ray bulbs. A lot of people use the Arcadia bulbs, um, Power Sun. I personally use the mega ray. And I will put an Amazon link in the description if you guys want to go check those out, I do order mine from Amazon. They are Amazon Prime. Number five is patience. So obviously they're not going to recover overnight. In fact, reptiles recover from injuries and illnesses much, much slower than other animals. So it does take time. Like I said, it was a month of doing this with Arcadius before he could move his legs and poop. A whole month. And number six is always seek vet help. Reptiles need to see the vet just as much as your dogs or your cats. And had we not gone and seek the vet, Arcadius would have been so constipated, he probably wouldn't have made it. Because we went to the vet, he was able to tell us, stop the phosphate blocker, and he showed us how to poop Arcadius. He did it, we did it, and I think that really helped. Number seven is handicap everything. Like I said, we lined the bottom of his tank. He was in a 20 gallon long, because he still was little. Um, we lined the 20 gallon long with a towel. We took out anything that he could 
possibly hurt himself on, not be able to climb. He used to have a log in there that he loved, but without use of his hind legs, there was no way that he could stay balanced on it or even remotely climb it, so we had to take it out. And you guys have seen his enclosure. It's just a bunch of ramps, which is very inconvenient. It's not great for iguanas, but because he cannot climb that well, we had to put in a bunch of ramps. So number eight is more for if your iguana is constipated or not defecating on their own, increase their water. So we fed watermelons, cucumbers, because those are really high in water without very much of a nutritional value. So it's not going to throw off your diet very much, but it's very full of water. Also making sure you have proper humidity. Um, we did give Arcadius water through an eyedropper. If you didn't take normal water, we flavored it by putting like blueberries in water and letting it sit and mix it up. So then it was like kind of blueberry flavored water and he would drink that from the eyedropper. So just making sure that they get water in their system because then maybe they'll have to pee and like get it all out. And of course lots and lots and lots of baths because iguanas like to poop in the water. So by continuously putting them in the water, maybe triggering some thought in their mind about going to the bathroom, they might feel like they need to. And of course speaking of that, because they can manually poop your iguana and if need be, they can probably show you how to do it too. Like I said, if, it's a, if you can avoid it, I recommend not doing it. I was even concerned about learning how to do it. I didn't really want to do it. But knowing that I do want to be a reptile keeper, I figured it would be good for me to learn. And I can add it to my resume. I know how to poop an iguana. That's not a skill many people have. And the final thing I want to say is it's important to remember that your iguana isn't going to go back to full health after dealing with metabolic bone disease. If it's severe enough. A lot of the times they will get out with kinks, spinal damage, nerve damage. So with Arcadius, because of the spinal damage that he has, he also has nerve damage, which is why for a, temp for a little while he was paralyzed until it kind of recovered a little bit. But he still, he can't use his hind legs that well. He can use them, but not the way he should. I feel like he doesn't even really sense where they are. A lot of the times he'll overshoot and clock himself in the head and get his nail stuck in his head. So he really, he can use them, just not as well as he should. He also doesn't lift himself up when he's walking around. He drags his butt around. It's kind of cute, but it's not how an iguana should move around. And he has the kink in his spine, the kink in his tails. So he didn't go back to full health, he is also severely stunted. He is two years old and he's the size of a one year old. He was one when we got him, he's grown a little bit since then, not much, and I really don't think he's getting much bigger than he is now, maybe a tiny bit, but like I said, he's two and he should be twice the size that he is now. So just remembering that they aren't going to go back to being a extremely healthy iguana like you would have hoped to originally have. They will have some downfalls, but you still gotta love them anyway. Alright, thanks for watching. Hope you guys learned something. If you have any experience with metabolic bone disease, any stories you want to share, any questions, feel free to just comment below. Like I said, I will put everything I just said is in my blog post. I will put that link in the description below so you guys can go check it out if you want to be able to read through everything that I just said. There's pictures. I might go a little more in depth about what I actually did, but I basically gave you the rundown in this video. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more videos, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.